Imagine giving your AI assistant the power to actually do things. Not just answer questions, but take action, use tools, and work autonomously. That's the power of agentic AI with MCP. Welcome to our comprehensive series on AI agents and the model context protocol. In this video, we'll explore what makes AI truly agentic. First, we'll define what an AI agent actually is. There are many definitions out there, but we'll use Anthropic's clear and practical definition. Second, we'll dive into the action feedback loop that powers agent behavior. This is the fundamental pattern that transforms a simple chatbot into an autonomous agent. Third, we'll look at real-world examples of agents in action, from coding assistants like Cursor to research agents that can explore topics deeply. And finally, we'll introduce the Model Context Protocol, or MCP, and see how it solves the integration problem that was holding agents back. By the end of this video, you'll understand the foundation of agentic AI and be ready to build your own agents. So what exactly is an agent? If you search online, you'll find dozens of different definitions. Even asking ChatGPT multiple times might give you different answers. For this series, we'll use Anthropic's definition, an agent is a system where large language models dynamically direct their own processes and tool usage, maintaining control over how they accomplish tasks. The key word here is dynamically. The LLM makes decisions in real time about what to do next. Agents are built on three core concepts. First, autonomy. The agent decides which actions to take, not just following a predetermined script. Second, tool use. Agents can call external functions to perform actions beyond just generating text. And third, the action feedback loop. The agent takes an action, evaluates the feedback, and decides what to do next. This is different from an agentic workflow where code controls the flow, not the LLM. In workflows, the code decides which LLM calls to make and in what order. In true agents, the LLM is in control. Think of it this way, a workflow is like following a recipe step by step. An agent is like a chef who can improvise based on what ingredients are available and how the dish is coming together. Let's examine the action feedback loop in detail, using a real example. Imagine you're in an AI-powered code editor like Cursor, and you ask the agent, write unit tests for my feature.py file. Loop 1, the agent reads feature.py. This is the action. The file's contents are the feedback. Now the agent knows what functions need testing. Loop 2, the agent writes the tests to a new file. Writing the file is the action. The written code is the feedback. The agent can now see what it created. Loop 3, the agent runs the tests. Running is the action. The test results are the feedback. Did they pass? What's the coverage? If the tests fail, the agent enters another loop. It might fix the failing tests or write additional ones for better coverage. This continues until the results are satisfactory. Each loop, action, then feedback, then decision. This is fundamentally different from a deterministic workflow. In a workflow, the sequence is predefined. Step 1, call LLM to detect language. Step 2, if language detected, then parse. Step 3, return result. The workflow code controls the flow. The agent LLM controls the flow. Both patterns have their place. Workflows are better for tasks requiring guaranteed steps or compliance requirements. Agents are better for open-ended tasks requiring judgment and adaptation. Let's look at agents in action across different domains. Coding agents are probably the most common. Tools like Anthropic's Cloud Code and GitHub Copilot integrate directly into your development environment. They can read your code, write new functions, run tests, and even debug errors autonomously. Some are supervised, like Cursor and Windsurf, where you approve each change. Others are unsupervised, working in the background while you focus on other tasks. Research agents take a different approach. Anthropic's research agent can conduct deep investigations on any topic. 
It uses web search tools to gather information, spawns subagents to explore different angles, maintains a memory of its findings, and synthesizes everything into a comprehensive report. Customer service agents are becoming increasingly sophisticated. Beyond simple chatbots, modern agents can access your account information, diagnose technical issues, walk you through solutions step by step, and escalate to humans when needed. Application specific copilots are appearing everywhere. Your CRM might have an agent that generates sales reports. Your analytics platform might have one that explains data trends. Your design tool might have one that suggests layout improvements. But agents aren't limited to these categories. We're seeing agents for creative tasks like 3D modeling and art generation. Agents embodied in physical robots. Personal assistant agents that manage your schedule and communications. Even AI personalities on social media that develop unique voices through interactions. The possibilities are genuinely endless, and we're only scratching the surface. Before MCP, building agents was challenging. Here's why. Every LLM has its own way of handling tools. OpenAI expects tools in one format. Anthropic expects a different format. Google has its own format and so on. Now imagine you have four different tools you want to provide, a calculator, a web search, a database query, and a file reader. Without a standard protocol, you need to write a connector for each combination. Four tools times three models equals 12 connectors to write and maintain. This is the M times N problem. M models times N tools equals M times N connectors. As you add more models or more tools, the number of connectors explodes it quickly becomes unmaintainable. Even worse, each connector has its own bugs, its own edge cases, its own maintenance burden. Update one tool? Now you have to update M connectors. Add a new model? Now you need N new connectors. This fragmentation was holding back the entire agentic AI ecosystem. Developers were spending more time on plumbing than on building actual agent capabilities. We needed a universal standard. Something like USB for AI agents. One interface that works everywhere. That's where MCP comes in. The model context protocol solves the M times N problem elegantly. MCP was inspired by the language server protocol, which did the same thing for code editors. Before LSP, every editor needed its own plugins for every programming language. After LSP, editors just need one plugin that speaks the protocol. MCP provides a standard interface between AI applications and tools. Tools expose themselves through MCP servers. Applications connect through MCP clients. Now our four tools times three models problem becomes four tools plus three models. Seven connectors instead of 12. Each tool creates one MCP server. Each application creates one MCP client. The protocol handles the communication. MCP defines three main primitives. Tools are functions the AI can execute. Like our calculator or web search. Resources are data sources the AI can access for context. Like documentation or log files. Prompts are reusable templates that guide the AI's behavior. The protocol handles discovery automatically. When a client connects to a server, it asks, what tools do you have? What resources? What prompts? The server responds with the list, and the client can use them immediately. This standardization unlocks powerful network effects. Anyone can build an MCP server and share it. Developers can consume servers without worrying about the underlying implementation. The ecosystem grows naturally. Let's recap what we've learned. Agents are LLM-powered systems that dynamically control their own behavior using an action feedback loop. This is different from workflows where code controls the sequence of operations. Real-world agents are already deployed for coding, research, customer service, and many other domains. The M times N problem was blocking progress by requiring separate connectors for every tool model combination. 
MCP solves this with a universal protocol that transforms the problem from M times N to M plus N. In the next video, we'll dive deep into MCP's architecture and see how all the pieces fit together. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe.